As far as uh, two centers uh, will make their presentations uh, remotely from uh, Jordan and from Mexico using Skype. Let's rely on the technology, on the technology and hope that, uh, let's pray that technology would let us see and hear our colleagues from other countries. So, our first presentation in, in the list uh, brings us uh, to Africa, to be particular to Nigeria, and uh, we will um, uh, get a paper presented by Mr. Ganyu Agbaya, uh, from uh, uh, director, executive director of African Regional Center for Space Science and Technology Education in English Language. So, Ganyu, floor is yours. Good afternoon. Okay. What was the operation like? Okay, I think I got it. Good afternoon. First, I'd like to thank uh, UNOSA and um, the Russian Federation and ESA for bringing us together for this particular capacity building efforts. I'll be presenting on uh, the activities of the uh, regional center, one of the regional centers in Africa for the English speaking countries in Africa, now 25 countries. I get it right. Okay. Well, the headline is uh, just to look at how capacity building is support sustainable development. Look at this establishment of the centers and what we are doing, our efforts in catching them young, international collaboration challenges, and uh, our recommendation towards the thematic priority seven of uh, Unispace 50. First, it is important that uh, to actually improve the quality of life of our citizens you need to understand or be in control of the environment. And with this, there will be progress in terms of socioeconomic development. Understanding the environment, you'll be able to provide security, thereby having improved well-being for the people. We are very familiar with the definition of the sustainable development there. Well, capacity building in space science and technology, as well as enhancement and retention of the existing capacity are very critical to develop competencies to efficiently respond to various uh, problems in the sustainable development. It is also important that we should note that capacity building is about change and transformation through the designing and facilitating culturally appropriate local solutions. Indigenous capacity is very important in this sense to develop to development issues. In that sense, we have to think of individual capacity building, organizational capacity building that is having the necessary structures. And at the same time, institutional policies. You can have the capacities and you get back to your place of work, you are not able to perform. No infrastructure, the policies are not right. So we are saying capacity creation, the utilization of that capacity and retention of the capacity. We know that back in 2000, we have the MDGs. Now we are to look at 2030 for the SDGs. We are already two years into SDGs. But I can tell you for the MDGs, most countries that were involved, it took them 10 years to even get data to get started out of the 15 years of the MDGs. So the space science and technology is the easiest and shortest way of getting this data and at the same time, using it for sustainable development. 35 years ago, 
the UN have seen this, and they've instructed or agreed that there need to build indigenous capacities in space, science, and technology if no one country will be left behind. Those are the General Assembly resolutions, Unispace 82, and then that of uh, 1990, UN Corpus, in which the establishment of centers for space science and technology education at the regional level in existing national and regional educational institutions in the developing countries was agreed at, that the, at the New York General Assembly back in 1990. Well, you can see some of these uh, countries. Nigeria's um, regional center, which is meant for the Anglophone countries in Africa, was inaugurated in 1998 and located within the Obafemi Aulo University. That's the campus. We have, uh, these are the countries involved. Well, those are the past directors. So started by Professor Valogum from 1998 to 2000, Professor Jegede in, in 2005 to 2009, and we have uh, Professor Akinyede in 2009 to 2013, then late uh, Dr. Fala Fashade, uh, 2013 to 2015, and to date, I'm the current uh, director. Our programs are mainly PGD, postgraduate diploma program, based on the curricula developed by the UN OSA. Uh, it's for nine-month postgraduate program in the five key areas which we have been talking about. Um, we have international participants. Uh, the UN OSA actually give grants to their flight and return, and Nigeria takes off care of uh, other things. And uh, it is expected as member countries contribute and pay, make some contribution towards the running of the center. But this has not been coming forth. We'll talk about that later. To date, we have four under, uh, over 400 and close to 500 now, because some will be graduating by the end of uh, next month, about uh, 23 of them will be graduating. So 17 out of 24 countries have actually graduated for the PGD program. Well, they're just showing some of the field work and the classrooms. Uh, some of the work of the PGD students, designing of uh, a prototype CubeSat in those days. Um, Again, we have a Master of Technology program, which is 18 months. Uh, it is in collaboration with one of the uh, University of Technology in the, in the country. Uh, we have been admitting students since 2013. Uh, some of them have graduated, 27 of them have graduated, and uh, the program is really uh, attracting a lot of our students. We have uh, many programs, especially Catching Them Young programs for students. In the secondary school, we've participated in the Human Space Technology Initiative through the UNASA, in which we take students, secondary school students, through uh, how to perform experiments, how to report about experiments, and then getting them to uh, use uh, STEM. We've developed curricula for space science education in primary and secondary schools in Nigeria, and we pass it on to the Ministry of Education, and that uh, has been implemented in phases by some of these, uh, by the s secondary school and primary schools now. These are some of the student programs. This is some uh, water rocket modeling. I can also report that three of us uh, young secondary school students have participated, or undergraduates, some of them have participated in the Zero Note program, uh, 2006 to 2008. Uh, they've been doing that at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. But the budget is not two minutes more. OK, I have to fly straight to. These are some of the programs we've been participating in. We are also involved in the, the right, that's space education workshop. The Space Generation Advisory Council, we are involved in it. And we've been doing so much about it. I will go straight to our recommendations and uh, this we have a live uh, discussion or telephone uh, Skype call to the astronauts in uh, South Korea. 
space clubs and all the rest. We are involved in the, some research work, which is a current one, the certification monitoring system over Sahel and region of Nigeria. We are involved in so many other programs. These are some of the challenges. The expected the permanent site uh, model is on. Right. These are international collaborations, and um, we believe we can also have more. And that's included uh, the Samara University. The challenges are mainly the financial commitment of member states and the debt of uh, infrastructural facilities. Uh, recommendations. There's need to strengthen the capacity and status of the UNOSA regional, regional centers for space science and technology to be a major hub for regional capacity building. And there's need for domestication of ownership. By this, there's need for regional bodies, such as uh, AUC in Africa, ECOWAS, IGAD, and all the rest, to hone it so that there can be effective utilization of the center's potentials. There's need for visibility, visibility of the UN OSA so that when they attend our uh, uh, board meetings, governing board meetings, and graduation ceremony, it gives a good uh, effect to what we are doing. There's need for staff training and curricular del delivery. That is, we need to standardize across the regional centers how this, uh, the delivery of the lectures and the modules are carried out. Common e-learning platform for every modules is also very important. With collaboration in research and support from teaching for teaching facilities uh, from space-faring nations and linkage it to other international capacity building network. There's need for incubation of best practice from industries and other major players through UN OSA in the centers. Global access to data, software for teaching and research purposes, and other relevant educational materials to be done through UN OSA. We need to standardize or standard certificate for the PGD uh, design similarly. Conclusion. Well, we can see that um, application of science and technology to socioeconomic development are gaining wide acceptance. There's no doubt about that. And that there's a clear evidence that the impact of the UN assisted capacity building program, which has already produced an appreciable number of uh, trained personnel, as revealed by the activity of ACT and its achievements in this establishment. There's need for new strategies for capacity building at the formal and informal levels of education to train a sizable number of experts and ensure meeting up with the SDGs 2030 are evolving in line with advances in technologies. The regional centers should be made to keep abreast with them. So indigenous capacity acquisition, utilization, and retention in space science and technology is key to the socioeconomic sustainable development of any nation. Thank you. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ganyo, uh, for interesting uh, presentation. So we have a few minutes, maybe for one or two questions from the audience. So, yep, Ray. Thank you very much for a very nice presentation. My question is, the, have you ever had any difficulties? And if so, uh, the, I, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, you are saying, everybody is saying very good thing all the time, you know, <laughs> only good thing. But I'm, I'm quite uh, interested in what is the uh, difficulties, what is problems in the, your, the organizing this, uh, the, your, your organization and the, the managing and operating this uh, the huge, yeah, I think it's a quite a huge task. And the, what is the most difficult part? I think the major challenges are in the paper. You have seen it. There is funding, and it has to do with um, members coming together and 
making contribution to ensure that the center actually runs very well. So that's one of the major challenges. And uh, the other one is that of the global, I mean, uh, the board meeting, governing board meeting, the governing board meeting, governing board members are member countries within the region. And uh, you find out that uh, members are not, Nigeria has been actually bringing in the members, pay the flight, do the everything accommodation, but budget is going down and uh, <laughs> members are not able to come as often. So we are trying to devise a way to ensure that uh, this is actually resolved. If they come, but like we had a, a board governing board meeting this year, and some already proposing that they will gear up their government to come in. And some are also actually, actually proposed, like Ethiopia is already proposing that you should come to Ethiopia and have the governing board meeting there. So we're making some progress in that way. So, but we believe that some of the recommendations, if they are done, if they are carried out with the alliance coming up, we centers will be far, far better, and no country will be left behind. So, thank you very much. So, any more? Maybe one more question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next uh, presenter. We we change a bit the order just for your information. Don't be surprised uh, since we will have the two last presenters calling in via Skype, so we don't have to keep changing the display. Uh, next presenter will um, uh, will be um, uh, Anas Emran uh, from the African Regional Center for Space Science and Technology in Morocco. Please. Uh, I'm pleased to present uh, the role of the Regional Center uh, for Space Science and Technology Education in French Language. Okay. The CRAS uh, LF was established in Morocco in 23 October. 1998. Uh, he has uh, realized under the initiative of UNUSA, UN General Assembly Resolution of 1919 and 1995. The CAST uh, is based in Morocco in at the uh, uh, Mohammedia School of University of Mo uh, uh, Mohammed V of Rabat in the center of Rabat. Uh, he has uh, 13 uh, member uh, states of uh, Central, North, or, or uh, uh, West Africa. Okay, uh, as uh, our uh, center, the objective of the center is increase knowledge, capacity building uh, in science and, uh, and technology by organizing postgraduate and uh, short courses, master, seminar, workshops, conference, and the regional level to improve the technical competence of the expert, teacher, decision maker, and the whole t informant about technical progress to assist the country to strengthen the local and regional capacities and to promote cooperation between the developed country and the uh, uh, state member, as well as among the status, and to develop expertise in space, science, uh, sciences, and technology. Uh, at, uh, for the moment, the CAST organized 24 uh, training courses in, uh, in uh, different uh, uh, specialty, uh, 15 activity in space technology, short courses, seminar, workshop, and uh, conference in the uh, several thematics, change, climate change, uh, water resource, etc. Uh, for uh, postgraduate guided uh, training courses, master, uh, 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 14 sessions in remote sensing and GIS, five sessions in satellite meteorology and global climate, uh, three sessions in satellite communication, and uh, three sessions, not two, in Genesis. For example, for the years, we opened uh, one session in remote sensing and GIS, one in satellite meteorology and climate change, and one in Genesis. There are 22 uh, countries benefit the formation, the, the training, uh, for uh, member country or no member, because the member is uh, 13. Uh, 25, just for uh, information, 25% female and 35% male. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2012, the class has upgraded uh, his uh, master by partnership with the university. Now, the each training session taken place in two phases. The first phases they take place in the in the class in the center. The the the, the, the training 
receive theoretical and practical courses, launch study and pilot project. The second phase, the, the training, achieve the research project in their institution. Okay? After that, the, the, the training defends his memory in the center. Some pictures. This is the, this is the center with the, the sh differentiation and the classroom. This is the, this the uh, uh, of course, the work in the field and the defense of memory. OK. Uh, concerning short courses, the CAST uh, organized 51 activities. Until, uh, until uh, 2010 and 2006, you have 34 activities for short courses, for example, 16 short courses and 18 conferences for any country. Now, for, 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 for example, for the year, for, uh, for 200, 2017, uh, you organize in January one uh, uh, Genesis school in Rabat in Morocco from five countries, 22 participants. In uh, ju July, uh, one, sh uh, one regional workshop in multi-sky remote sensing for sustainable development from satellite to drone in the prevailing Gabon. In October, three activities. The first activity is Space Weather School Isui in uh, Abidjan, Ivory Coast, from 59 participants to 12 countries. And also, uh, one regional workshop in October, in, in, in last week, uh, in last week in Ivory Coast, uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, concerning with mapping space infrastructure and data sharing on water. Okay? Uh, and the uh, other uh, activities in, in, uh, in October in Morocco concerning modeling geospatial technology for water resources in Africa. The last one uh, in, in December, we we'll organize in uh, Central Africa uh, one workshop concerning the water resource quality and use in Central and Eastern Africa to impact over ecosystem and health. Now, the, the class uh, uh, had participated in some Euro European projects. It's good for the for the for the institution because it has funding. Uh, uh, the role the cost is dissemination dissemination uh, data and capacity building. For example, by putting data in educational resource created in the science event or the cost IDF, for example, the meeting or workshop, and establishing link with other geoportal. It's very important for uh, for uh, for uh, stage and uh, and administration. And developing open geo geoportal data. What is the problem? A very good question. The problem, the problem, is resol resolved, solved. It. For example, for the recognition of the Bluri, because in the first stage you have the problem because the stage when, when you achieve this uh, master, you have the problem for uh, the uh, administration organize, etc. Now we have the, uh, uh, the uh, you have. Uh, I agree, the, the, the master by university, the problem, not, not problem. Uh, the, the, the foster capacity building, yes, the cast, uh, he, he uh, organized, uh, is organized uh, uh, each year, uh, any, uh, uh, any uh, activity for the, yes. What is the problem? Is the problem? The problem for look sponsor. Is the great one, yes. But but you have, have the problem with sponsors. But I don't think the about that. Uh, uh, of course, awareness of the member state that contributes to the BG of the center. The center is the great problem. It's the big problem. <laughs> it's the problem. Uh, uh, the support of UNUSA is very important for developing space activity of the center. We are looking the support. For example, it's very important here. Now we have very uh, many agencies present in, the, in this meeting and send the space agency to assist the sun. Not for money, just for, for example, uh, material or uh, activities, uh, etc. Support uh, uh, or integration of the center in project funding, in research project, and development the training workshop. For example, in any agency, you can help the, the, the country in, in organize, like for example, for uh, China, for Baidu. I, I, I hope <laughs> another activities, <laughs> okay? Uh, I conclude. It's, it's finished. <laughs> you say one short of the left behind. You have uh, 13 minister present in the in the board direct, uh, director in the cast. In the area of capacity building, cast is trying to push the region forward. If anyone wants to push more, 
to not forget someone behind it. It was, it's welcome. The problem now is the, 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 the last uh, sentences. The problem no, no is data. Uh, uh, before five years, the problem is the data, is the, the software, the hardware. Now, the data is open. The software is it, uh, no problem. The problem is you have the gap between Africa and the, uh, and the rest of the, the world because the problem is the innovation technology. This is the problem. Okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Anas. Any questions? No? Okay. Thanks for now. Well, there will be time for questions. <laughs> okay. Now we'll move to another continent, and I have a pleasure to invite Dr. Uh, Jin Nong Wang from China to share with us uh, experience of Chinese uh, center. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, for your suggestions. So yesterday, I, my topic focused on the alliance of the regional centers. So today, I will talk a little bit more about the center in China. So first, I would like to say how to establish the regional center. So they have uh, some procedures. And uh, t time of uh, term of reference established by USA. So we apply this new regional center start in the 2013. So we make a presentation uh, in the subcommittee of the UN USA. Then we also should be accept the invariation by UN expert uh, invariation team. So we finished in the 2000, 2000 uh, uh, September 2013. Then this center also should be signed agreement between China government and uh, the UN USA. So finally, we make everything, ev finish every procedures in 2014. So the inauguration ceremony, yeah, is be held 2014 in November. So according to the rules of the regional center, so this regional center governed by the governing board. And also, it has to be a, uh, the member states, should be have member states. So in our regional centers, so the governing board will be organized by the director of the CSA, China Space Agency, and also the members from our member states they also come from, most of them are directors of the space agency from uh, member states. And uh, now we have uh, 10 member states. So, and uh, the director of USA is the observer of the regional center. And uh, another observer is uh, the director of the EBSCO, the Secretary General of EBSCO. So we have uh, two observers and uh, 10 member states and now I think that we, we welcome the countries to join the, the, our regional center. Uh, how to join this regional center? So I think the procedure also is uh, simple. So you should, your space agency or related organization should connect with uh, the China Space Agency. You should sign agreement with them and uh, free of charge. And uh, the benefits for the every me member states so China government will be of uh, uh, at least three government, Chinese government scholarship of uh, a quarter to every one member states. But you should follow the procedures I agreement, then we can be our member states. So this is uh, the second government board. And uh, this is the advisory committee. Advisory committee organized by the, our President of uh, Beihan University and also uh, senior professors from the outside the, the camp university and also worldwide. So also we invited the former director of uh, USA, uh, May, uh, Mr. Camacho, and uh, and uh, the former director, uh, Madara Osman, to as our co advi advisory committee. This is a map of the regional center. <coughs> 
And also we extended the cooperation with our member states and also how to we are, we, what we are thinking, how to give more benefits to our member states and, uh, and uh, give more service to the member states. So each year we, we organize uh, the expert forum to exchange ideas, the demands, and uh, the analyze the trends of technologies. And uh, this year, we are also uh, uh, stamped out to the, our center to go to our member states the Brazil. So we pay visit to Brazil Space Agency and jointly organize the, the, the forum for the South America. And uh, the new reception, of, I already said, I said. So we need to thank all our partners. So every year we will have a reception to get in together. And uh, how to operate these regional centers? So we defined that we each year we have five actions. So the main tasks is uh, education and uh, training programs. And also, we should raise opportunity, uh, the visibility to the public of the regional center. And also, we should do the cap capacity building to, uh, to improve uh, these programs and also with publications. So my colleagues also uh, this time also bring some uh, print materials. So, in that, so our brochures and also our new letters for, for your reference. So the programs in, two, in the last uh, three years, 2015. So we have uh, programs on global navigation satellite systems and uh, also the remote sensing and the GIS, and the basic, the basic space science, so uh, tech knowledge. And also we have a master uh, doc doctoral program. So all these courses, the curriculums, we reference uh, the follow the recommendation by the UN WUSA, the curriculums, and also combined with uh, our university disciplines and also the China practice. And also every year we will organize at least three, three short training programs and it's open to our member states. So this is uh, information about uh, the 2016, the doctoral programs and uh, the short training programs. And uh, about the faculty, our professors. So they they from the Beihang University and also from uh, other university in China, and uh, also we invite experts worldwide. So the Camacho Osme also take lecture in our centers, and also invited uh, the speak from Europe, uh, and also from. Other, other place. <coughs> so today we also have a good, uh, very good speak uh, in these forums, okay. <coughs> so some uh, uh, outreach activities are already told, the, the, the drawing is exhibition. So we think that engineering and uh, art, so they have very uh, close relationships. And also the students, uh, they are the, the ceremony. And uh, all the students' programs, we offer the scholarship. So we, we got to the, every year, we got to the 50, the Chinese government scholarship. And uh, we, we will provide it to our member states and also through our partner, EBSCO, to distribute the, all the, the, the quotas to, to our member states. So this is some facility. For, for the for the, our programs and our partnership map maps, and also the statics for what we have done, and for this year already we uh, we increase the number to fifty three, and all the students now are studying in the campus, and the next year we are planning to add one more uh, disciplines on space law and the policy. 
we already have this program last year, but next year we, all, we are planning to add these programs. So if you have uh, interest, you have uh, connected with us and are welcome to join our programs. And uh, also we, we would like, we, we feel in the field of space technology, so navigation is very widely and, uh, and can be used everywhere and for any time. So we would like to extend the, the, the training in global navigation satellite systems. So we established a, the, a new school. We call it the, the Beidou Belt and the Load School. So how to operate this school? We would like to make the partnership with the university in the Belt and the Road countries. So select each country we selected the top university in space field to with uh, can be the partnership. We jointly establish the labs and uh, also do some joint research and uh, students exchange. And also we prepared to establish the, this school the online to, to connect the, the resources and uh, uh, online to provide the materials. So this is uh, the this is the signing ceremony, and also the arc already I, I did it. So also we would like to extend the cooperation between the centers. So also the our visit to other regional centers. And also this is the center, the, the lobby, the reception hall. So also this is a, a website. So lastly, I thank you, I, everyone, and also looking forward for your suggestion, comments, and the cooperation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wang, for your comprehensive introduction to activities of the center. Very impressive, actually, list of activities. And uh, I have a very small comment. You introduced us uh, to timeline, you know, when uh, China did apply for the center. But uh, historically, if my memory serves me right, the first application of China was, uh, I believe, the end of 90s. China wanted to host the center, but uh, due to various reasons, you know, it took a bit uh, long time, you know, when uh, this idea became a true gain. Thank you very much, but we have uh, uh, one question, uh, time for one question. Ah, uh, microphone. I would like to know if the recipient of the scholarships have any obligation, and also is there a system for tracking the, the graduates of the programs so that we, it can be ensured that they are still within the space industry or in the academe with space programs? Thank you for your question. So in the end of this year, we will uh, distribute the introduction programs for the next year. So also you can uh, visit our website and also uh, the follow the information you can contact with us. So for, for application, right? Actually, actually, qu yeah, 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 uh -huh. question was about, you know, obligations of uh, participants of this school to return back to space industry. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, uh, for many activities organized by United Nations Special Automatic Activities like fellowships, uh, participants or applicants actually submit a kind of uh, confirmation letter from their government or their institution confirming that uh, participants uh, after graduation or after the formal course would be able to apply the knowledge gained at this or that program in their respective institutions. That's it. Thank you. So now I pass the ball to my colleague Laurent, who will test the space technology, at least the communication segment. I will try to get in touch with Jordan this time, yeah? Hello. Yes, uh, thank you very much. The voice is uh, clear.
Nazir. Okay, have you already started the presentation on the screen? Thank you very much, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs uh, staff, all the staff, and also the University of Samara, uh, their staff, for uh, allowing me uh, to give me this opportunity to present the, uh, this presentation about the Regional Center for Space Science and Technology Education for Western Asia, affiliated to the United Nations. Next slide, please. Well, my presentation will be under the following outlines. Introduction to the Regional Center, the services and facilities provided to students at Regional Centers, permanent location at the Regional Center, academic and training programs, scientific conferences and workshops, I mean the activities of the Regional Centers, and finally the future vision of the Regional Center. Next slide, please. The introduction to the Regional Center, as you may all know, regional centers were sort of established 2011. I'm at Jordan, and the establishment based on the related United Nations resolution numbers 37 over 90, 10 December 1982, 45 over 72, 11 December 1990, and 50 over 27 of 6 December 1995. Next slide, please. In the 29th of May 2012, the Regional Center uh, for Space Science and Technology Education for Western Asia, affiliated to United Nations, has been officially inaugurated in Amman, Jordan, and hosted temporarily by the Royal Jordanian Geographic Center. And the ceremony was under the Royal Auspicious at that time. Next slide, please. And the picture shows the director of the United Nations office speech at the ceremony. Next, please. Is, is it clear so far? Hello? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, the map shows the distribution of the regional center around the world after the official inauguration. Regional Center for Western Asia has become one of the six regional centers around the world and specializes in space science and technology education in Arabic language. Immediately after the opening, the regional state were signed a convention of establishing the Regional Center for Space Science and Technology Education in Amman, Jordan. Next slide, please. Our vision at the Regional Center is to utilize the capabilities of space science and technology for the benefits of humanity, national socio-technological development through education, advanced researches, and 12 training as well. Next, please. The goals of the Regional Center is as following. Strengthen the capacity of member states in the field of space sciences and technology researches and application programs. Grant master degree in four related disciplines in addition to short mid long term training courses, which will last th three to nine months. Offering a scientific environment for Western Asia region so students and researchers can contribute in the development of their countries in the field of space science and technology. Next, please. Assisting educators to develop environment and atmospheric sciences curricula that they can use to advance the knowledge of their students in their respective institutions. Enhancing regional and international cooperation in space science, technology, and applications programs. And developing skills for satellite communication, including those associated with rural development and disaster mitigation, provide network linkage to the region's professionals and scientists, government establishments and industries in order to facilitate the exchange of new ideas, data, and experiences, assisting in disseminating the value of space sciences and technology to the public in improving their daily quality of life. Next, please. We can see in the slide the structure of the 
Regional Center, which consists of the overall uh, policy makers, the governing board, and the Director General, Advisory Committee, uh, reporting to the Director General, Republic Relations and International Control Unit, and then we have the UT Manager, the Administration and Finance, the Academic and Training, the Technical Service. These all three are all departments, and we have branches from these departments, the section relating to the work and objectives of the Regional Center. Next, please. The Governing Board. Well, governing board includes delegates members from each secretary to the establishment of the regional center for space and technology education for Asia Asia uh, conventions. Uh, along with the establishment of the center, the governing board has been selected and nominated from each uh, state member state of the uh, center, and it has its first meeting immediately after the inauguration in 2011. Commissioners, delegates, and observers from the regional state center related organization attended the meeting. Uh, members of governing board are from this regional state where they signed the agreement. Uh, so far, we have the following state members of the regional center Jordan as a hosting country, Libya, Lebanon, Iraq, Sudan, Syria, Egypt, Yemen, Oman, Kuwait, and Palestine. Next, please. Victor show one of the uh, governing board meeting attended by the United Nations Office of Space and Peace representative. Next, please. There was some decision has been taken by the governing board, elected to Jordan, chairman of the governing board, and of Syria as vice president, and signing of bilateral agreement as follow. The first is with the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. Second, with the Arab country who are participating and become a member of the regional center, as shown. And we have some agreement with international, regional, and local organizations and governmental, just like the Arab Union for Astronomy and Space Sciences, ISNIT, Islamic Network of Science and Technology, and the Malaysian Institute of Space and Science. And other decisions has been taken by the government board meeting, the selection of the members of the advisory committee from inside and outside Jordan. Next, please. The picture show the signing of the bilateral agreement with the United Nations Office of Outer Space and Peace at that ceremony. Next, please. We have uh, some uh, academic and uh, technological institutes and uh, as, a, as a partner, Dr. Jordan here, the face is the Royal Jordanian Geographic Center, which hosting the regional center temporarily, and al Bayt University in Mafraq city of Jordan, the Department of Meteorological in Amman, Jordan, University of Mota, University of Balqa, the Higher Council for Science and Technology, the University of Jordan, the Jordan University of Science and Technology, the Association of Arab Universities, and Arab Union for Astronomy and Space Sciences. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm going to very fast. Services and facilities provided to a student. Uh, we have a classroom equipped with appropriate training aids and data show devices for instruction and uh, remote sensing, just cartography, photometry, and space geodesy laboratory, tutorium, accommodates over 100 people. Next slide, please. We have a library, we have a storage facilities and media, and other facilities that make the students fit for their, I mean, uh, to achieve their goals, and accommodation with kitchen facilities, gym, uh, and sports. You may go to the next slide, you can read it as well. Uh, now we are coming to the permanent location. Actually, uh, since two years, we are preparing to give uh, to to, to uh, construct a new location for the center, and uh, the first stage probably will be handed over uh, by the first qu first quarter of 2018. Uh, please move to the next slide until the movie. Are you there? Yes, the slides show the design and the, the, the plan of the, of the new building of the regional center. And please click on the movie. You can see. Is it okay? Did you click on the movie? 
Okay. Okay, go to, uh, to the next slide, the academic and training programs. Fine. Okay. In cooperation with United USA, the following courses will be taught at the master's degree level, like and GIS, satellite communication, and satellite technological, global climate, space, and astronomical sciences, and we are based, the curricula that have been prepared by the experts from the UN USA. Next slide, please. We have already started a, a program to grant master's degree in remote sensing and geographic information system, system in collaboration with the University of Malta. And uh, so far, 60 students have been graduated from this course. Next slide, please. Uh, in parallel to the academic uh, program, we have uh, training courses, three, six, and nine months, relating to the disciplines of the digital sector such as remote sensing and information systems, satellite communication, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. You told me 15 minutes. Now you're going to make me very hairy now. Uh, this picture shows some uh, of the training program that has been conducted to the regional state members and locally as well. Next, please. Uh, the regional center uh, contributes in many scientific activities and workshops. This is a space week activity, actually, this is, uh, conducted by the regional center and attended by many, many participants from all over the country. Next, please. Uh, recently, we have conducted a workshop for CubeSat Technology Design and Development. This workshop has been conducted in collaboration with ISNET. Next, please. And also, we have been participating in the first international conference for geospatial information management. I show in the slide. Next, please. Uh, co coordinating with Space Application Program, United Nations. We have sent students for scholarship program in GNSS. And they, they have been actually uh, participating uh, a good opportunity to participate and conduct the microgravity experiment in the Polo program drop tower experiment series. And those students have been selected from the Jordan German University in Amman, Jordan. Next slide, please. And we have uh, the activities in collaboration with the Arab Union for Astronomy and Space Sciences and the Astronomical Society of Jordan. We have astronomical events, observation, and student astro workshops as well. Uh, this is on the right hand side is my picture. Participating in Jordan as a society is relating to under excellence in the various fields of astronomy and space sciences techniques. Next, please. Also, uh, the regional center participated in many exhibitions in the relating uh, field, as shown in the slide. I'm not going to read all of these because the time is very short. To run. And next slide, please. The picture show some of the, these activities on the ground. Next, please. And this is the final. Thank you very much. Also, it was a very short time to give an ex the presentation of the digital center. We have many, many activities and work here. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye bye to all. Thank you. Hello? No, I'm not asleep. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Laurent. Uh, first of all, good afternoon to all of you. Greetings from Mexico. And I would like to thank 
the uh, organizers, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, the Russian Federation, the University of Samara for the opportunity to make a short presentation uh, to you. Now, uh, perhaps if we could move to the uh, second, second slide, please. You have probably by now and then have a fairly good idea of what Unit Space Plus 50 will be. It's a uh, it's an event that will be used to mark the 50th anniversary of the first United Nations Conference on the Exploration and Peaceful Use of Outer Space. That's Unispace uh, in general. There have been three conferences, as you know by now. And rather than having a fourth conference, one of the things that the committee agreed upon was to work in the preparation of a special event, there will be a high-level segment in which all countries of the United Nations will be invited to participate, uh, to be held uh, in, next year in Vienna from 20 to 21 June. Now, it seems like that's not a lot of time, but one of the things that uh, has gone into this preparation is a lot of work to align the work that the committee does with the goals of the global development agenda. Generically, uh, development, sustainable development for the world. May I have the next slide, please? Now, Unispace Plus 50 then is going to bring focus on what space can do in particular to support sustainable social and economic development in countries any place in the world. So we want to take, we in Latin America want to take, and the Regional Center for Latin America and the Caribbean, want to take advantage of that focus that is going to be placed to see how the region can best use the space tools that are provided uh, by the developments that science and technology has had in the last 15, 17 years since the last Unispace conference. That was in 1999, so it's actually 18 years by the time we, we get to Unispace plus 50. Uh, and may I have the next slide, please? Now, the, um, the main technologies, as you have maybe seen already, are remote sensing and the use of geographic information systems, satellite communications, satellite meteorology, which is a type of Earth observation, only we keep it separate because it's, it's used prim <clears throat> primarily for uh, weather forecast and <clears throat> to monitor large meteorological events. Atmospheric and basic space sciences, which covers the near Earth environment, and that, and that involves also looking at new issues that we did not look at um, during Unispace 3. And, then, and those, those include uh, space weather, for instance, what is happening in the near Earth environment. We did in Unispace 3 identify that there was a need to look at near Earth objects, which are a threat to Earth in case they should impact us. These are uh, fields in which there has been large progress in uh, these 18 years. So the committee looked at how these could be used to support sustainable development throughout the world, depending on uh, <clears throat> what preparation uh, countries had 
and to promote the idea that we need to have highly qualified human resources to be able to use all these technologies that we have there. Now, in the mechanisms and framework, one of the things that is highlighted, and I will mention this as I move forward, is international cooperation. And you will see this uh, <clears throat> shortly. And all this has to happen within a space policy and with a close harmony to what we call international space law. Don't have time to go into details of that, but essentially space policy uh, <clears throat> indicates what a country intends to do in space and space law abiding or being in harmony with the international treaties would indicate this is how I will conduct my activities in space. So when these two uh, uh, parts exist, then it's easier to participate in international cooperation. Now, mention a little bit more on this a little bit later on. The next one, please. Now, we have some challenges because in uh, in developing countries, we do not have the numbers of highly qualified scientists, technologies, technologists, and practitioners in the broad range of space fields that I just showed you uh, before. It does not mean that we don't have good people working on this. We just don't have sufficient highly qualified human resources to address everything that we would like to be able to address. Another challenge is that the decision makers and the managers of national development programs are not aware of what space technology can do for the work that they do. And in particular, the, uh, in the global development agendas that I will get to in a minute, there have been uh, commitments that countries have made. And countries are working on meeting those committing and those commitments for these global development targets that have been set. And this is being done with or without the assistance of space. Those that have greater awareness and those that have more qualified people are using space technology to meet those targets that a country has set for itself. Another challenge is that uh, there is very low communication in many countries between those that can provide the use of the technology and those that could benefit from the use of the technology. May I have the next one, please? Okay, now to talk specifically. These are the three global development agendas. These are the large development agendas. These all have a period that goes from 2015 to 2030. So we will be working, we the world will be working on these objectives for the next foreseeable future. These agendas did not just develop right now. They, they come from work that was done in the later part of the last century and that has been evolving to reach the stage that we have right now. The Agenda for Sustainable Development 2030, the action contained in the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction that has a, also a 15-year uh, period, although I'm sure it will continue beyond to 2030s. So we need to work on all of these uh, issues, keeping in mind a 
long range um, commitment that that we make in whatever work we're going to be doing to uh, to meet those global commitments. The third one is the Paris Agreement on Climate Change that you have heard about. It was agreed upon in December of 2015. Now here's something very, very important. This, these were agreed, these goals, global development agendas were agreed by heads of state and government and ministers. The Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, were heads of state and government, and they made commitments. If they made commitments, it means that when they went back, these are being taken up by their institutions, and the institutions have a budget to meet those commitments. So if you think in terms of where am I going to be able to make an impact and have the money to do it, these are the big goals that exist at a national level as well. May I have the next one? Now, <clears throat> these are the 17 development goals. As um, you can see, they're very high level, they're overarching. One of the goals is we should have no poverty. There should be zero hunger. We should have good health, good education, going down to 11, if you look at 11 sustainable cities and communities, this means uh, have resilient communities. It means being able to deal with disasters. If you look at 13, climate action, uh, 14, life below water, Hello. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, you only. Hello. Okay, anyway. Uh, if you look also at 17, this is one of the goals. Partnerships, these are international partnerships. Now may I have the next one, please? Now, the important thing is governments set their own targets. They were not forced to set them. And they made commitments voluntarily. Implementation is on a voluntary basis and they agreed to report on progress. The two things that are very important are highlighted there, that they agreed to promote the use of advanced technologies. Space is one of those advanced technologies. And they agreed to promote international cooperation to achieve those goals. I have given you there a link so that you can go and, and see some more of the uh, detail. And may I have the next one? Paris Agreement is similar. Countries will be submitting updated climate plans called Nationally Determined Contributions, NDCs, every five years. Now, I gave you a link right there. You can go and see what your country has committed to do. There were 195 countries that signed it and 188 have submitted their plans. So these, these are coordinated activities between the Agenda for Sustainable Development, this Paris Agreement, and may I have the next one? And the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. That one has seven targets and four priorities. 
you can find those seven targets and four priorities at that web link that I uh, <clears throat> that I highlighted there. There are uh, <clears throat> there's work that has been done in the past. There have been regional platforms that for disaster disaster risk the reduction that have been set, and they are being built upon. So we're not starting anything from scratch. We're building on the work that has been done in the past. The next one, please. Now, Unispace Plus 50 will then be, will have concrete deliverables, deliverables and outcomes. One will be a draft resolution on Unispace Plus 50 that will be adopted by the General Assembly in 2000, December of 2018. And the work that is going to be done during these two days, building on two years of work, three years by the time we get to Unispace Plus 50, will be the Space 2030 Agenda, and it will have an implementation plan. This will be the equivalent, this will be the Space 2030 Agenda, which will be equivalent to those three global development agendas that I have just shown to you. The next one. Now, to benefit from the focus that is being placed on the use of these space tools, what we plan here in uh, at the Regional Center for Latin America and the Caribbean is to convey the message that space can support their development agendas, each country's development agendas. But for that, the country they should have or should develop a national space policy, identify areas in which it can develop excellence, establish near, medium, and long-term objectives, and develop a strategy to reach those objectives. Now, listed some of the uh, important parts of that strategy. The first one, as I started this presentation, is to have enough highly qualified human resources. The last one that I mentioned there, ensure the necessary funding, relates to the importance that the governments place on the global development agendas. So we need to get space to support the global agendas, and in particular, the national agendas. The next one, please. So, in, uh, in preparation for Unispace, there were seven priority thematic areas that were identified. The seventh one, capacity building for the 21st century. Now, in... Uh, May I have the next one, please? Now, thematic priority seven is cross-cutting to all the other, uh, sorry, lost my screen here. It's, it's, it's cross-cutting to the other thematic priority areas. So one of the one of the things that we uh, plan to do in the regional center for space science and technology education of Latin America and the Caribbean is to raise awareness and build capacity in Latin America and the Caribbean. In the use of the space tools that I mentioned in support of to show the relation how how the space tools apply to the global development agendas. To coordinate awareness raising that we plan to do and the capacity building activities that we will carry out with the work that UNUSA is going to be, probably have heard by now, is responsible for the mechanism, is the mechanism for implementing the recommendations that will be incorporated into the uh, UN resolution on Unispace Plus 50, which will be the work plan to go forward. We also plan to join the regional 
regional cent the alliance of regional centers to support as a group of centers the USA activities to implement that follow-up plan to share experiences with the other regional centers to develop educational materials and a number of other activities that we have been discussing with um, our colleagues in the other regional centers. Uh, I don't have time to go in, into other <clears throat> other matters to know if we have any time for questions. I would leave that up to, um, to Laurent to let us know. And in any case, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, um, Mr. Camacho, I'm very happy to have heard you um, almost live. I heard you before your name. I'm from the Brazilian Space Agency, so we're just getting hold of the Cricktail campus in Brazil. And I would like to first thank you and congr congratulate uh, Mexico's experience. And also, uh, I have been talking to uh, other people here. We, were, we, we are very interested in sharing um, e-learning and uh, since our languages are almost the same I think it would also be <laughs> very important that uh, we Portuñol, Portuñol exactamente. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you very much and congratulations again well thank you very much and I look forward to, to working with you in the very last slide you have my email so please, please send me an email. Okay, thank you. Well, Sergio, here's Fernando from Brazil. So another question from Brazil. Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, for your presentation. Um, one, one, one question, Sergio. I mean. Uh, uh, I have been participating, and you may remember that the first time we met uh, was in Unispace 3. Um, so, I mean, uh, that Congress was an outstanding event. Um, I just would like to, I mean, to, to understand, I mean, for this, uh, uh, you have presentation on the agenda of the Unispace uh, uh, plus 50. Uh, uh, quite just two days, uh, I think probably the question is, is a little, I mean, um, uh, simple. But do you think, I mean, just two days to discuss all these topics, is it, is, is, will, will it be sufficient? Uh, or, or is, I mean, if necessary, the Congress will be extended? Uh, no, the uh, it, it's not a congress. It will be a. Uh, it's being called a special event because it it will take place on those two days. Uh, those those actually will be part of the session of Copus. The uh, the special event, if you look at the calendar, begins on a Wednesday. The two days before, Monday and Tuesday, will be used for Unis Place plus 50 related events. Now, what the, uh, what the committee has been doing is working on the recommendations that will come out of the Unis Place plus 50. So there is already, a, I don't know if a presentation has been made on this. There is already for each one of those th seven thematic priority areas, there is already a um, uh, an objective, and there's also a mechanism to implement it. To uh, as as you recall, Fernando, in uh, from Unispace three, we had the recommendations 
that led to the establishment of the SGAC. Now, that recommendation had not been worked out in detail, and you and the SGAC dinosaurs met in Vienna for three, uh, not in Vienna, in Graz, for three years to come up with the, uh, what was the proposal for the SGAC. What has been done now is there, there is an action team that has been established already to implement priority one. There is a, uh, there's an expert group that's working on um, space weather and USA has been identified to implement both uh, priority six and priority seven. So we have the mechanism already before we even begin the discussions, we have the mechanisms to take whatever recommendations have been made in the last two years and recommendations that are made in those two days they will be uh, carried out already. There is somebody responsible for each of the seven thematic areas. And that's important because if there's nobody responsible, then they're just recommendations and very little happens. But these uh, seven thematic priority areas do have a mechanism to carry them forward. Um, Sorry that I don't have too much time to go much more into it, but I would be happy to maybe discuss it more by email uh, offline. And it's very nice to say hello to you, Fernando. Wish I had been there too. Hello? I, uh, I understand. Very <laughs> <Yes. laughs> much. Okay, hey, Codex, you know, the next uh, item on our agenda is a panel discussion, which uh, actually is supposed to play a very important role in development uh, recommendations mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago by Sergio and uh, other speakers. But it's a really challenging uh, task now because we are well behind uh, time and uh, at uh, 18.20 we are supposed that the latest we are supposed to finish because at uh, 6.25 uh, organizers uh, would wait for you downstairs uh, to bring you to the buses uh, for uh, guided tours. So my proposal is that we try to do it in a very, in very straightforward format, very quickly, and uh, finish uh, maybe at uh, 18.25, uh, the latest. So I would like to invite our distinguished panelists who may share with us uh, their views, their um, uh, ideas. So ladies are first, uh, and uh, I would uh, love to invite uh, <coughs> Ms. Laridana Santa of Italy, Ms. Ray Kawashima of Japan to join us at this table. Also, my colleague Laurent already here. So, uh, Michael Mygraf, the pleasure. Then, uh, Professor Romanov of Russian Space System, uh, and uh, our, uh, let me say, host, uh, Professor Belakonov. Again, you know, uh, it's a very challenging exercise, and uh, supposed to give us a good floor for discussing uh, recommendations, you know, we're going to uh, develop or start developing uh, tomorrow morning. Recommendations uh, themselves are extremely important part of this workshop, and actually this part of brainstorming uh, makes uh, United Nations workshop, you know, a bit different compared to other scientific uh, meetings where people just, you know, sharing information, you know, here. Uh, it was mentioned, actually, said Sergio by, uh, very well, that, you know, recommendations uh, uh, which were brought by a number of uh, workshops before Unispace 2 uh, led to establishing of uh, regional centers. 
uh, number of workshops, you know, which were held before Unispace 3 in 1999, actually led to establishing of such program like uh, uh, Space Char or Charter on Space and Major Disasters, uh, led to establishing of International uh, committee, uh, committee on GNSS, led to establishing Spider UN Spider Program and uh, Space Generation Advisory Council mentioned uh, by here. So, uh, I. Ex <laughs> Uh, reach my limit, so I would uh, ask maybe all our distinguished panelists use a uh, two, two and a half minute slot maybe to briefly introduce themselves one by one and uh, maybe to come out with uh, some uh, good idea which may be discussed by audience. Actually yesterday we had a number of excellent recommendations made uh, at the final part of uh, our gala dinner. You know, I hope that uh, today we also can be that productive like we were yesterday. Okay, Loredana, <coughs> please be the first. My name is Loredana Santo. I work in the University of uh, Rome, Tor Vergata. I am full professor of uh, um, manufacturing processes and technology. I teach in uh, some courses and uh, two of them are, the first one is uh, um, uh, manufacturing process and industrial sustainability. Another one about uh, laboratories for uh, space uh, application. Uh, my first recommendation uh, for this workshop uh, is uh, to transform the our ideas of uh, uh, um, sustainable development in actions. This is not simple. We know well the uh, concept of uh, um, sustainable development and uh, apply that to different fields. But uh, the problem is to uh, find, uh, um, uh, to, to, to apply the concept, in particular for, for space. So my, rec my recommendation is uh, to find tools in order to make the ideas, applications, and, uh, um, and actions and applications. Uh, actions means uh, uh, simply uh, to transfer uh, ideas to the right in institutions, or to organize program, common programs, uh, or other things, but it's necessary to make something and not only words. This is my recommendation for the, the workshop. Thank you very much. I believe it's an uh, excellent idea. But uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, tomorrow when both of yeah. start working, it can be discussed you know, in more details because it's uh, simple to say, but it's uh, really yeah. very, very difficult to we can organize a working group that uh, can propose uh, mm -hmm. something. Now, okay. now, Ray, please, your turn. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me, such a great panel. Uh, the, my name is Ray Kawashima. I'm working for UNISEC Global, which is University uh, Engineering Consortium, uh, the international, international organization. And the, we are focusing on the university students' practical the space application and space projects. And the, our uh, the dream is to allow the more than 100 countries university students to have opportunity to uh, the participate in the practical, the real space projects by the end of 2020. Okay, but the, uh, in yesterday, I realized the, uh, the, the United Nations, uh, the, the 2030 agenda, as you, you know, clearly stated that you no know, country, no, no, no one will be left behind. So, if this concept, if we, are, if, we are, if we apply this concept to our organization, we need to say no country will be left behind, not 100 countries. So that is uh, the big challenge. So then I, I want to suggest, this is my recommendation. Maybe we need to identify which country is currently left behind in space, the capacity building. And the, 
I was uh, so surprised that uh, so many good regional centers, uh, United Nations, are working uh, very hard and involving uh, in the, uh, the, the, the encouraging uh, many countries. So that is very, very good uh, the trend, good movement. Uh, but still, maybe many countries are still behind, and they are not involved in uh, these activities. So, uh, the, so one idea is, the, is uh, we will involve more players to uh, help these activities to split the space capacity building. For example, SGAC uh, is one of the good networking uh, group. They, according to their the report, uh, 10,000 membership, the, new, the young people are involved in the SGAC. So I think this is uh, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the opportunity for us. I, I'm not very sure if there is a SGAC member here. Ah, okay, okay. So, so now you are responsible for this, okay. So this type of the, you know, the uh, flexible, uh, the spontaneous, the, the activities will make a huge difference, I think. Thank you very much, Ray. And now I would uh, ask uh, Michael to say a few words. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Michael McGrath, and uh, up until February of this year, I was engineering director at the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder and an adjunct professor in the aerospace engineering department where I've taught spacecraft design for 20 years and another project space course for about 15 years. And I decided to give up all those titles and become what I call a senior advisor right now. Uh, and I came here for, uh, ac actually, uh, for a specific purpose uh, to talk with Igor about um, maybe advancing what I think has been put forward uh, in this organization meeting. Uh, and that is how to create cooperation at the highest levels of the space programs. Um, it's, trust is an issue. People are, are nervous and, uh, and unfortunately we all have to go there. We all have to work together for thinking about leaving this planet. Uh, and so I would, I would actually like to try to make something happen uh, with some of the space-faring nations uh, using um, the UAE as a, if you will, an integrator of ideas and, and platforms. So um, my idea is to actually try something, see if we can make it work, and create some evidence that, that this is something that would be good to move forward with. A, a small goal. Yep. Thank you very much, Michael. It's very precisely, you know, you did it, uh, you formulated it very precisely and uh, ju in <laughs> and, uh, just in the time frame. Uh, discuss. Okay, thank you. Now, Alexei. Okay, I am Alexei Romanov. Uh, my duty is Deputy General Director of Russian Space System Corporation, and I am part-time professor at Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. When I'm teaching my students uh, for um, system development of space technique and uh, for the uh, postgraduate students in high school of system engineering, applied system engineering. So <coughs> uh, my attention to this workshop is uh, that uh, we, we, we are living in very interesting time. Everything is more fast, uh, but not cheaper and uh, uh, not uh, uh, high quality uh, products, especially for uh, so-called small satellites. So three questions I will um, uh, I will um, um, uh, attract from audience. First one, uh, that is the synchronization of technology life cycle and education training life cycle. Because the total life uh, cycle of technology is, is too short but we still have a very conservative uh, educational program. For example, you just saw from the regional center, all this program are prepared what year? 
probably 2000, maybe the end of 90s. Uh, for the 20 years, a lot of changes uh, for education. Second issue that uh, is um, uh, prolonged now, the team of uh, Mr. Makeda and his group uh, in Kyushu University, uh, they are paying attention to the standards of cube sets because uh, I have some uh, unofficial information, for example, that latest uh, uh, cluster launch of uh, nano and micro uh, satellites from 72 satellites, probably about 50 does not work properly. And um, uh, finally, <coughs> I would say, uh, and um, uh, from my opinion, it is very interesting, our friend from Hungary, Victor, uh, asked in his presentation the question, can Coursera kill the university education? My opinion, no. <laughs> Thank you, Alexei. And now microphone goes to Professor Belakono Figur, who is uh, actually, you know, in Samara University, one of the uh, persons who stands behind organization of this uh, workshop. Yes. Thank you. My name is Igor Belakonov. I am the head of Space Research Department. Uh, all emerging countries want to build own nanosatellites in the popular format CubeSat, uh, cheap and quickly. But many satellites did not work after orbiting. Why? Almost half uh, nanosatellites uh, do, doesn't, don't work after separating. It is a very interesting problem. I think that very important are electromagnetic problems which uh, usually uh, don't take into account when you uh, design and produce nanosatellite. Electromagnetic problems. For big satellites, electromagnetic problems are very important and desi uh, solve um, exactly as usual. So I propose to establish expert group for developing uh, scientific educational nanosatellites which uh, uh, have to analyze and to formulate recommendations uh, for uh, find uh, for find uh, problems, e and I think that we can to find answers on these problems. And electromagnetic problems are very, very. Uh, very important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Igor. Now we have to pass the microphone to around the table to my former colleague from the UN Office for the Space Affairs, Laurent, uh, who now present uh, his ideas. Maybe. Thanks. Well, yeah. Uh, before I move into the working group, though, I have to just say something. Of course, it's my personal opinion. It's better to say that in the beginning when you are saying something more provocative than Victor. Um, all these recommendations that you are making in a way or you are talking about, in my opinion, can be addressed easily. Uh, there's nothing difficult or impossible. But uh, let's not forget the resources that are required. I think that's the most important issue here. Uh, and in the end, that's the, the answer to, I think, uh, uh, you know, nobody left behind addressing 100 countries, uh, de level developing curricula that are more in line with te te technology and not five years or 10 years behind. Yes, all those are important, but resources will be required. And uh, for a lot of these things, our office as the only office in the UN responsible and mandated to address space-related uh, issues 
is responsible. We helped develop those curricula uh, some years ago. We, we have to organize the capacity building. We have to help developing countries get access to these training resources. Yet we have a $3 million budget a year. Well, I know we are being webcast, but I'm saying it very loud and clear. That's a joke. To have the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs run on such a budget is a joke. Uh, so we have to look at resources. We have to make sure that you are also helping us advocate in your countries with the donor governments, with the companies who have corporate social responsibility programs. You cannot do any of this with pennies. There's all these donors that are providing billions in development aid. A small fraction of it goes to space technologies and even a smaller fraction goes to space-based capacity building. That has to change. And then all these other points probably can be easier tackled and we can have thousands of students from developing countries going to these workshops, these training uh, op opportunities will be more accessible to them too. I can promise you that. Uh, when it comes to discussions and food for thought for tomorrow. You see, I'm sure you all saw the agenda. I hope you all did. Uh, and uh, tomorrow we break in working groups, three working groups. And you probably saw on the agenda what these working groups are named and what the topics that will be discussed are. So I will not repeat those. What I would read is some of the questions that will be raised in these three working groups. We will make sure that we distribute uh, this more uh, detailed material to all the chairs and rapporteurs we selected for those working groups. And then they will probably put on the screen and project for you all those questions and the anticipated outcomes from these working groups so that you have time to think, discuss, and make recommendations in those three groups. So I'm just reading these questions that we expect you to discuss so you can already think tonight, tomorrow morning about them Within working group one, space economy, uh, which addresses development of space-derived uh, economic benefits. We are looking at how to ensure socioeconomic benefits for societies uh, from apl application of space technologies. That's a question. How space technology can be a driver for social and economic sustainable development? What are the existing challenges? What are the future needs? Some of those will were pointed out already. We would like you to capture them in concrete recommendations. Working group two, space society. Evolution of society and societal benefits stemming from space-related activities. We have also three questions there that you, we want you to think about. What would be some of the most important capacities to be developed in space science? Uh, how new space technologies can support sustainable development? And what are the trends in space innovations that you would think of or could talk about? In working group three, space accessibility, all communities using and benefiting from space technology and applications. Uh, again, a big dream, yes, I think it's possible. Questions that we are looking at, what are the ways to inform a wider audience on the importance of space and space activities, and how to attract the younger generation to space-related careers. And I think some of these points were already addressed. Let's just use the time tomorrow to talk more about it and again capture some good points. Uh, so these are questions. Uh, my strong recommendation is do not forget the resources. Think about those two. Uh, and and uh, I'm sure then a lot of these challenges we are talking about in our slides will be resolved. I come from peacekeeping and humanitarian affairs. I worked many years in those different UN entities and I've seen how an organization can do a lot more if it has 100 times more resources. So uh, I know what I'm talking about. As I think you also said yesterday, I know what you think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Laurent. You know, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned, we have uh, extremely limited time, you know, otherwise I believe we would have a very lovely discussion, but at least uh, we may assign two minutes uh, for a couple of uh, quick questions from the audience uh, addressed to Panelist. Yep. Yes, so we can uh, support uh, the proposal on uh, capacity building network and also um, uh, why uh, using uh, uh, space uh, technology for uh, higher Wi Fi in all the world using uh, space technology and uh, Wi Fi with uh, good, uh, you know, capacity and for network. Also, as mentioned yesterday, 
about early learning uh, training course, capacity building by uh, teleeducation with uh, such materials about space technology, remote sensing, GIS, uh, space uh, diplomacy, you know, many things. We can, as a future learn, you know, you can get registered to any uh, training course and you can uh, get a certificate and videos, uh, materials, good materials with uh, newest uh, information about uh, many things you want. And we can offer for United Nations to uh, apply this technology and uh, with uh, higher uh, teleeducation for space technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is it question or comment? <laughs> if it's a question, uh, do you address it to somebody in particular? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think the target audience for training is, is not at the uh, university level. I think the target audience for training is very young. I think, I think space scientists become space scientists when they're 10 years old, not, not when they're 25 years old. So I, I would encourage people to think about society will change by educating a certain group of people, but I think the tar target audience for education is actually quite young. And uh, that's how I think space will evolve and change. Okay, thank you very much. So we have uh, one minute for one question. Okay. Take a mic, please. I feel that I'm monopolizing the microphone. If someone uh, wants to ask the question, I will give the, the right. <laughs> okay. Um, so you said that um, space scientists are formed when they're 10. That is really interesting. Could you? Um, we're, we're facing a, a moment now in, in the space policy in Brazil where uh, people just think it's a luxury and I tend to disagree as well. Do you have more um, data <laughs> on this? Uh, the, d the data I have is um, I work with scientists every day and I ask the question, when did you first become interested in science? And the answer is not when they went to the university, but they had the interest all along. So you have space scientists in your population. They're there. They're men and women. You just need to put information out to attract them, and it will happen. It'll take time, but it'll happen. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Now I have a recommendation that everybody should rush to the rooms to take uh, coats and jackets. And uh, please be, uh, Anton, at uh, 6.25 or 6.25 p.m. local time, Samara time, uh, please be downstairs. And maybe in buses, uh, there will be, you know, buses would be equipped with microphone. So you can continue this question and answer session in your buses. Thank you. Okay, and tomorrow morning we will have more about the working group. So see you at... Uh, Museum.